Jamie Oliver has become one of the most famous celebrity chefs to emerge out of Britain, building a food empire that makes food more approachable for everyone, thanks to simple recipes, down-to-earth TV shows, and even product lines. And his mission today is convincing consumers to think more local for their food and make superfoods more accessible to everyone. There's always problems and there's always issues, you know. Yeah, superfood at the moment is quite a middle class thing, they say. Um, it's quite faddy, you know, it's been from quinoa to goji berries. And, you know, really the point of my series and, and this book was to kind of make it more about foods that are around us every day. And it's, it's not so much about specific ingredients, but how you take you know, really nutritious everyday ingredients, but cluster them to be wonderful meals. Um, but I, I think, you know, it, it will settle. I think it will settle. The one thing is for sure is the public, the Canadian public, the British public, um, they definitely, you know, they want to have lots of inspiration for helping them make maybe a few more better choices. And I think, you know, we, we like the naughty choices. We like having indulgence. You know, we like a filthy burger at the weekend. But I think, I think generally speaking, people are wanting to try and get it right you know, Monday to Thursday, Monday to Friday, and, and kind of, you know, give themselves a nice lunch that's gonna make them good at work and all those things. Oliver has also become somewhat of an activist, convincing the British government to go forward with a sugar tax, a move that has served as a model for other governments to weigh the pros and cons. The single largest source of sugar in our teenagers and kids' diet is sugary sweetened drinks. And I did a year and a half's work to build a campaign and force debate in government uh, to get legislation through, which we've got, right. to have a sugary drinks tax, which will put a billion pounds into our primary school system for our under 11 year olds for sports and, and food education. The problem with sugar has been, with the exception of sugary sweetened drinks, which is definitely a problem, and there's a lot of money behind our biggest sporting events and our worlds that push that, um, is food, sugar lost in food that shouldn't have sugar. You know, pasta sauce, pasta sauces that have like 15 teaspoons of sugar in it for two people. Really? So I think um, in Big Food Inc, what you'll get is you'll always, you know, get those ways of high salt, fat, sugar, water products, you know, they'd rather sell you that than food. And Oliver has been taking his role as a food advocate seriously, even going back to school to get a master's degree in nutrition. And if you think like, nutrition's one of the newest sciences. It's only started in the 1950s really, and um, it's early days and there's so much cool stuff coming through now. If that concept of nutrition historically has been, oh, here come the party poopers, oh, boo. Um, but actually, I think, I disagree. I think it's about what you can have, not what you can't have. Um, good nutrition is about, oh, have this, try that, put that in there. And I think, you know, when you kind of look at things like slaw, pickles, salsa, you know, if you look at kind of like cool flatbreads and like, you know, noodles, pastas, and, and just kind of like using recipes to become packages of all the good stuff. For me, that's where it gets really, really exciting. Oliver's hit TV series and best-selling cookbooks are seen and read in more than 120 countries. And he hopes his efforts to get people to change the way they think about food will have a ripple effect. People forget that the food industry is the biggest industry on the planet. It's bigger than arms, bigger than oil, bigger than city trading. You know, food is the biggest industry on the planet and farming is the biggest employer on the planet. And um, we're trying to fix it. And uh, really the, the kind of the secret weapon is the public. When the public get passionate, you know, when they really, when, you know, when, when the public start to realize that when they go shopping every week, actually they're voting um, with their dollar. That is the most powerful turbocharging. If people switch from one thing to another, like the world changes.